Okay, in this exercise, we're going to be drawing a simplified eye as a way to practice our observational skills. Go ahead and print out this worksheet, which should be the first in the set, and follow along. By the way, I'll be using a colored pencil for this demo, but please feel free to use whatever drawing tools you like. By the way, if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to check out the full drawing fundamentals course at mydrawingtutorials.com forward slash basics. It's designed to teach a complete beginner all the basic skills they'll need to become successful at drawing. Okay, back to the lesson. We'll start by drawing the eye at the same size as the reference, also known as sight size, using this grid. I'll start with establishing the eyebrow, but really you can start at any point. I'll estimate where the eyebrow will intersect this vertical grid line and mark it. Then I'll check the distance with the divider just to make sure. Next, we'll match the angle of the eyebrow. I find it useful to look at the negative space around the line, which can really help me to judge the angle. The eyebrow is mostly a straight line, but it also has some subtle curve to it, so pay attention to that. You might find it helpful to just draw it as a simple straight line first, and then add the subtle curves later. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's check the angle of the line. I'll align the edge of the pencil with the line to capture the angle, and then move the pencil over to the drawing and compare. Of course, we have to be careful not to shift the angle of the pencil while moving it. One tip is to hold the pencil just above the paper and stabilize your hand by touching the tip of your thumb and index to the paper and just slide back and forth. You might want to move back and forth a few times just to make sure your hand didn't shift. And it looks like the bottom half of the line needs to be rotated clockwise a tiny bit. Now let's match the angle of the next edge. As I'm drawing this line, I'm observing the distance between the end of the line and the vertical grid line. This will help me to judge the angle better. Double check the angle. And it looks good. On to the next one. As I'm drawing this one, I'm making note of where it intersects the vertical grid line and how far that point is from the center. I'll also note where it intersects the horizontal grid line if it were to keep going. Again, these little observations will really help me to judge the angle of the line. And you'll notice as we continue that this is a huge part of how observational drawing works. We're constantly making observations about where one line intersects with another, or how one detail aligns with another detail, and using these observations to keep our drawing accurate. Another tool that can help is to look at the negative space around the lines. So we could compare this negative space in the reference with our drawing and see if it matches up. Or this space over here. Or these triangle shapes that are formed by the intersections of the grid lines. All these little observations are chances for us to catch mistakes. And the more of them we use, the less likely there's going to be a huge mistake in our drawing. Okay, so assuming we couldn't find any obvious mistakes with our eyes using negative shapes, angles, and distances, Let's use our tool to double check. I'll use the pencil to check the angle. And it looks good. And I'll use the divider to check this distance and this distance. Because we're working in sight size, we can just transfer the distance over directly. In the beginning stage of a drawing, we want to take extra care to make sure that all our measurements are accurate. That's because this is the foundation of our drawing. If we have a lot of mistakes in the beginning, as we add to the drawing, those mistakes will get compounded and our drawing will become more and more inaccurate. So it's a good idea to measure and remeasure in the beginning. And as our drawing become more and more established, we can relax a bit more and do things more by eye. Okay, everything looks good, so let's continue. We can use the same process for the next lines. As the drawing progresses, we have a lot more negative spaces that we can use. So we can compare these different shapes to make sure the drawing is accurate. Negative spaces are great because they combine both angles and distances into one element.
Okay, lastly, we'll use the same process to draw the brow ridge and nose. Now, try to scrutinize the drawing with your eyes to see if you can spot any mistakes. And then use the tools to double check. I'll check the various distances to make sure that they match. And once you're happy with the drawing, darken and clean up the lines. I like to add some line weight variations by making certain segments darker than others. This helps to add some interest to the drawing. As you can see, simply by matching the angles and distances of a few lines, we were able to create the illusion of an eye. Now, go ahead and pause the video and draw this yourself, if you haven't done so already. Remember to carefully observe angles, distances, and negative spaces. Next, we'll draw the same eye again in the space below, except this time we'll be drawing freehand, and our drawing will be at a different size from the reference, also known as comparative measurement. In this case, I'll make the drawing a little bigger than the reference. We'll start out the same way by establishing the eyebrow. Having drawn this eye before using the grid, we'll help make drawing it freehand a little easier. And double check the angle. Without the grid lines there to guide us, we'll have to observe the angles more carefully. For example, I might note that the bottom line extend past the top line a little bit and that the two ends form an angle like so. This will help guide me as I'm drawing the line. Since we're still in the early stage of the drawing, I'll be sure to double check my angles to make sure everything is nice and accurate. Here, I'm making a note of the angle between this point and this point to help me figure out where the edge of the eye should be. As the drawing develops, we can start to compare the negative shapes. Even though the reference and the drawing are a different size, the negative shapes will still be the same. And even though we don't have the grid lines anymore, we can still visualize these negative shapes with a little bit of imagination. I guess technically these are positive shapes since they appear on the subject itself. But whatever, semantic isn't important. The idea is that looking at the space outside the line can help us to spot mistakes. Here we can notice that this corner of the nose bridge lines up horizontally with this corner of the eyelid. That's going to be really useful in helping us to place that line. Again, we can notice that that point where the nose bridge turns lines up horizontally with the back corner of the eye. Another very useful observation. And lastly, we can notice that the end of this line matches up with this corner of the eyelid. These are the kind of things you want to notice as often as possible when doing observational drawing. Once we're done, scrutinize the drawing for mistakes and then double check with the tools. We already checked the angle as we were drawing, so I'll double check the distances now. Since the drawing and reference are a different size, we can't just transfer the distance directly over. So after a little digging, I noticed that this distance is equal to this distance in the reference. Compare those in the drawing, and it checks out. And this distance is equal to this distance. And it's the same way in the drawing. And you can go on like this for as long as you want. It just depends on how thorough you want to be. Once you feel happy with drawing, darken and clean up the lines. And as you can see, we still have plenty of space on this page. So if you want to get more practice in, I highly encourage you to draw the eye again multiple times at various sizes until you fill up the page. You can never get too much practice. But with that said, we're going to be doing a lot of drawing in this course and I don't want you to get burnt out on just one exercise. So if you find yourself getting sick of drawing the same thing over and over, put the worksheet away for the time being and move on to the next lesson. 
you can always come back and keep practicing when you feel up to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and if you did, make sure to check out the full drawing fundamentals course at mydrawingtutorials.com forward slash basics. You'll get tons of additional lessons and step-by-step -step exercises and learn things like how to draw anything accurately from observation, how to construct and draw objects from your imagination, how to shade realistically, and a whole lot more. So if you're ready to improve your drawing skills, head over to mydrawingtutorials.com forward slash basics or click the link below.